Hi all, this is Night Elite. Welcome to my 2500 science per minute rail grid megabase. This base was built entirely in vanilla Factorio. It started in version 0.18 and was completed in version 1.0. The base is built without using the editor, except to make some of the blueprints, and um, it has biters and pollution turned on. Trains in this base are controlled with Priority Queue Request System, or PQRS, which was made by Quasars from the Factorio subreddit. You can see PQRS in action here in a demo that Quasars made. PQRS works by only dispatching trains once there is both an empty train at a receiver station and a full train at a provider station. If there are several trains that match that criteria, the one that has been ready the longest is dispatched first. For more information, see the PQRS documentation, which is linked in the description below. PQRS is not super complicated as far as the circuits go. The control logic is these sets of combinators up here, and then there's a memory cell for each of uh, receiver and source stations for each item type, which are down here, and that includes a dummy station for each one. One of the neat things about the PQRS system that's not apparent at first glance is you can actually see the state of your factory's supply and demand quite easily just by mousing over any power pole. So here we see that everything in green is something that has excess supply and it tells you how many stations are ready to deliver right now. And everything that is in red uh, is things that are in demand and it shows how many stations are demanding them other than the X which is just an extra signal that's used in the, uh, in the PQRS logic. Next, a very quick overview of the base. This is a bot-based mall and storage area. How much of everything the mall produces is controlled by the combinators here. The mall and the module factory, which is up next, are fed using PQRS trains. The module factory is capable of producing 105 modules per minute. Here we have uranium processing, red science, green science, Military science, blue science, purple science, yellow science, and finally rocket silos and space science. Let's continue with a brief uh, overview of a few other parts of the base. The factory is entirely nuclear powered. All of these nuclear reactors are built on landfill over water. This is a red circuit factory. Iron smelter, which is built next to the iron patch. Bricks. Low density structures. An oil processing block. Labs. There are two lab blocks like this. Rails, which is one of the higher production blocks. Blue circuits. Next, let's go over some of the base defenses. So there are biters on this map. We can see them over here. And there is most definitely some pollution. So the, the base is defended by uh, a few different systems, so I'll go over them a little bit here. This one here was the uh, system I used initially when expanding northward. You can see that this is a pretty long, extremely straight shot. And this just consists of uh, two parallel tracks, laser turrets, walls, radars, and uh, conveyor belt. You might wonder why a conveyor belt? Well, because that actually brings artillery along so that all the artillery turrets at each of these roundabouts can shoot at the biters. So all that comes from the starter base and that's a 30 kilometer long track of red conveyor belt full of artillery. So that was the initial thing. That didn't fit very well with the grid so then I needed to build a new set of defenses that would work better with the uh, the rail grid. So the next set I came up with was this one and this one was good. You can see it fits in with the grid nicely but something I hadn't realized initially was that uh, it only has one track, which means that if I, I couldn't build it independently of the grid because then trains couldn't go back, they would get stuck once they pulled onto it. So I wasn't very satisfied with this one and pretty quickly found that I needed to come up with a new version. 
and you can see that right here I made that transition. And so then I switch to this one which has bidirectional rail with roundabouts but that ties into the rail grid and once you get it started now um, you can just keep expanding this one without any trains and the nice part is that the builder trains can then cycle back to the, uh, the base once, uh, once it's been built. And same with artillery trains. These newer wall segments around the edge of the base are all defended by artillery trains uh, which are also use the same PQRS system as the rest of the base to schedule when they need to be uh, replaced. And so yeah, the defenses run all the way around. They don't quite connect up here yeah, since this lake made that unnecessary. So we have another segment there and then all the way out to here. Didn't end up needing quite as much space as, uh, as was blocked off because the base started suffering severe UPS issues in part due to all the biters. Uh, before this, I came to the uh, the edge of all the space that I had secured. And because it's fun, here's a little clip of the base defenses killing a wave of biters. How is this base organized? You may have noticed that it's broken up into these these concrete patterns and each of these represents something that I call a super block which is made out of a uh, three block by three block section and so the middle of each of these super block sections contains um, some train stations here's a, a typical one some of the ones near where I started don't have everything but this is a typical one and you can see here that it's got a bunch of builder stations in the middle and so each of these is its own logistics grid. If we turn on the logistics grid, you can see here that there is a small gap between each of the, uh, typically anyway, between each of the grids. Some of them don't, but here's an example. There's a gap, gap here, gap here as well. And uh, so each of those is a separate logistics grid. And so when, uh, when being built, this middle section of each grid is not part of the base and is just the builder stations to bring in all of the parts to build the factories, fuel for the trains, pavement, uh, other factory parts, rails and, and other things, landfill and things, uh, trash station and a transit station. Now what if we want to build a new segment to the factory? Well that is all set up in this blueprint book. So this is my grid megabase blueprint book. Uh, it's organized. There's the, the basic PQRS blueprints from Quasars. I've got this um, deconstruction planner that includes cliffs. And then this is a one of the super blocks. These are aligned to the absolute grid. So you can see that they only it's impossible to place this without it being correctly aligned with the rest of the base. And this includes just the rails and the uh, the train stations in the center section. So the, here's a freshly pla placed one that I'm at. You can see it contains all these stations and stuff, but does not contain any factories or concrete. And then for building individual factories, uh, if you want to make a new one, all of these stations, the PQRS uh, blueprints for all the store source stations are in here. I've created them all and then for each uh, type of item I care about shipping and similarly receiver stations are on this side and then the uh, some for concrete some wall elements here for the different chunks of the wall and then we've got uh, pre-made grid factories so if I did want as an example another electric engine factory um, I haven't aligned all of these ones to the grid, but I would just have to put it down and find a spot where it doesn't conflict with any uh, roboports and power poles that are already there, and then drop it down like that. And I'll show a quick example of that. Now I'll demonstrate how to build a green circuit subfactory as an example. So I rotate the blueprint, place it in the block, and now we'll cut ahead once it's built a little more. And wait, here we see that uh, once it's built enough and then all the PQRS logic is done, and trains are fueled, they can be put into automatic mode. And uh, once that is done, the uh, in this case, the receiver trains will automatically go and start getting some resources. After this point, we no longer need to watch it since uh, everything that requires manual intervention has been done. And the bots will finish building the remaining beacons and stuff once the supplies arrive into the superblock. And now for an example of how to build a superblock. 
Chopper has put down the blueprint, and it won't be complete. Only the chunks that were within radar coverage will be complete. Then I would go out here and build it with my Spidertron. Now we got to place it again. And the goal here is to build the entire middle segment of the uh, of the super block because that allows the trains to come in and bring more supplies to build the rest. Once the trains start bringing in supplies, this then is relatively hands-off, other than having to drop down the blueprint again as more areas get revealed by radar. We just gotta wait a few minutes for it to complete afterwards. Here you can see an example of the supply train unloading. It's a very simple circuit here that just takes items by whatever priority they uh, appear in the list by using a filter stack inserter to unload the train. And uh, it fills up to a level specified in a constant combinator for each item type. If you want to explore my base a little bit on your own, you can take a look at it on Factorio Box. There's a link in the description down below, uh, which lets you look at the base using Google Maps API to scroll around and zoom in on whatever sections you like and see how everything is connected up. You can also download the map from there if you want to check it out in-game that way. You can see here that the base does in fact do 2,500 signs per minute and that it has over the last 50 hours other than one little blip when there was a, a power issue which was solved by building some more power plants. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.